Hello everyone, and welcome back to another NVIDIA RTX 40 series speculation video. Now, today I want to talk specifically about the GeForce RTX 4080 12 gig, and my sort of, yeah, just kind of expectation that the card is going to have one very big problem. Or, to phrase it in a different way, it's going to have one Core, it's gonna have one clock slide and MSI afterburner that's gonna be way more important for, for, for performance than everything else. That being the memory clock slider. So, NVIDIA has decided that the RTX 4080 12 gig gets a 192 bit bus for the memory. That is half the bandwidth that an RTX 3080 12 gig has. So, that's just it. Um, I'm not even gonna go into how much of, of like how misleading this is. Like Jay's Two Cents already made a video about this. Actually, this is a screen crap from his video because he put the cores that they're based off in just to show that it is actually just a completely different card. Um, but I'm not even gonna go into that. How how much how how scummy it is to to sell you a card that's actually a completely different thing. I'm just gonna go into what this narrow memory bus means and what it implies about the card. So, um, yeah. So I guess pretty much everyone knows that graphics cards need data to work with. That that's why they have VRAM, video memory, just like your CPU has normal system RAM. And over time, memory bandwidth has been becoming more and more important for your overall performance because We've been increasing the number of cores that our GPUs have very significantly. Like 10 years ago in 2012, um, the fastest card that we had was a GTX 680. That one had 1536 cores, I think. And now we have 7680 cores in an 80 class card. And like, not even counting the 16 gig, which has even more, or even the 4090, which has 16,000 cores. Like, that is more than a 10 times, uh, yeah, more than a 10 times increase over the 680 in, in, in 10 years. So, we have 10 more than 10 times the core in like the top end silicon that we make. Um, and we need, we need memory to feed all those cores to do work. Like, not just do we have more cores, they also run at a higher clock speed, like a 680 did like, like a really good 680 does like 1300 megahertz. This thing, these are supposed to do like 2.5 gigahertz, like 2500 megahertz, or like even 2600 in case of the 12 gig, which is actually interesting that this thing clocks higher. Um, but yeah, so you have a lot of cores, and, and the more cores you have, the harder it is to feed all those cores with data to work on. Which is why memory clock has been becoming so much more important when overclocking, because your card's performance has become more and more bound to the performance of your memory, because it it, the, it became less about having fast cores and more about keeping your cores fed with data so they can actually do, any, do something and not just sit around like hyper energetically but not actually doing anything. Um, it's a similar concept with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. Um, you might have noticed, like you might have heard that that CPU runs really hot. Now, part of that is because of the 3D stacking, but another part of that is it just does more work. So a normal 5800X has to wait quite a lot of its clock cycles. That, that, that's just a thing that like effective clock is always lower than your actual like silicon like clock. Um, because there's always going to be some clock cycles that you're just not going to be able to utilize to actually do work. But the 5800X 3D has so much cash that compared to the 5800X, which has to spend a lot of clock cycles just waiting for data to arrive from the RAM, the X 3D can just rely on its massive cash to give that data to it, which is much, much faster than regular RAM, which means the X 3D can use a lot more of those cycles that would have been lost on a normal 5800X to do work, which is why the X3D is actually faster than, an, than a normal X, even though it's clocked lower, because it can use those clocks 
a lot more effectively. And that's also why it runs hotter, because it just does more work. It, it pulls more power, because sitting idle at 5 gigahertz is a very different thing from running AVX 512 instructions at 5 gigahertz. So, and, and the same concept, of course, applies to graphics cards. So if your memory is not able to give you enough data to keep all the cores fed, a lot of those cores are just going to sit idle. They're not going to be able to do anything. And that's sort of the problem that I'm seeing here. So we have increased the number of cores in the GPU. We have increased the clock of the cores in the GPU, and we have halved our memory bandwidth. Now, admittedly, the GDDR6 chips that they're using are probably higher clocked than what you get on the 30 series. But they're probably not gonna be twice as fast. Like, I don't think that they can pull off twice as fast memory chips, like, especially because the power consumption of, like, 30 series GDDR6X is already problematic. And if you increase the speed twofold, well, that's twice the power consumption on the memory now. Like... That, that, like, yeah, even if you could make chips that fast, they would probably run extremely hot. Like, if I remember correctly, a 384-bit bus of GDDR6X on, like, a 3080 was already pulling, like, close to 60 watts. Like, you're gonna have 120 watts just for your memory now. Um, admittedly, those have smaller memory buses, but, like, uh, 192-bit bus means six chips. Uh, even if you halve the power again to 60 watts, like, that's 10 watts per chip. Have you ever tried to cool 10 watts from, like, a little plastic box? Like, not easy. Not easy to do. So I don't think the GDDR6X on this is gonna be twice the speed. So, which means that we will lose memory bandwidth. There's just no, ar no way around that. We're going to lose memory bandwidth on these cards. And we're having, at the same time, we're having more cores that are running at higher clocks, and I'm just asking myself, how are you expecting to keep all those cores fed with data? Now, of course, there's also cache in the GPU, and they probably increased how much that is, but I don't, like, I don't think that's gonna do much, especially because we've seen to get so high, like, to get amounts of cache that are so high that RAM stops mattering as much, you need to 3D stack it. And Ada Lovelace is not 3D stacked, so they just physically can't fit enough cash into this. So it is going to be reliant on its memory bus, and yeah, that's just basically it. Um, my prediction is that, well, pretty much on all cards, because it's been a thing for ages, like the 20 series is where it really started, because the 20 series, the memory clock slider is basically as important as your core clock slider. And then on the 30 series, it got even more important. The 40 series is going to continue that trend. Like, memory is going to be even more important on this now. And they think it's a good time to make the memory bandwidth worse. So my prediction is that the effective clock of these cards is not going to be like 2.5 or 2.6 gigahertz. I wouldn't be surprised if the effective clock on these is like 1.8 or like 2 gigahertz. Especially on the 4080 12 gig. Like, I, I I just can't see how they are, how the, the card is supposed to feed all these cores with data. I, I, I just can't see it. And, um, yeah. Uh, so basically, yeah, this is going to have really low effective cycles, which explains why it has which also explains the design decisions, why they decided to give it, like, 2,000 less cores, because if they gave it more cores, they probably wouldn't do anything, because there wouldn't be enough data to keep them fed anyway. So why bother with them? And you can see this also in the core clocks, because the 12 gig clocks 100 megahertz higher than, like, the other cards. I wonder why that is. Probably because the effective cycles on this GPU are so low that the Jeep that the like relative GPU load that this GPU is experiencing is gonna be so low that you can just clock it higher because you just can't put as heavy of a load on this GPU as you can on the others. Because 
you will always have a significant chunk of your clock speed just be effectively wasted away doing nothing because the card is waiting for memory access. So, yeah, so like I'm not blaming NVIDIA's engineers for like giving it less cores or like pumping up the boot, like more boost clock looks good, like, you know, it offsets that people are upset that it has less cores, but I can see why. Because the memory is just not, just not able to feed more cores and you might as well crank up the clock speed because the, the load is low enough that you can. Um, so yeah, and also the 12 gig has a much, much lower power rating. So the 4080 16 gig has, I think, a 320 watt TDP. And the 12 gig, if I remember correctly, has a 285 watt TDP. That's 35 watts less. Now, of course, yeah, it has less cores and it has less memory. That's probably part of it. But again, it's running at a higher clock speed again, which increases your power consumption again. And... Um, yeah, part of that decreased power consumption is probably just going to be that, again, like the 5800X3D, because the effective cycles are going to be so low on this card, it will just pull less power because it's doing less work. So, yeah, that's my prediction for the 4080 12 gig. Um, like, of course, I could be completely wrong. If I am, then I'll, I guess I'll delete the video or, like, put a comment or something into the description. But this is what I'm predicting. So yeah, th this is my prediction for the 4080 12 gig. It's just gonna going to have like a really big problem with keeping effective clocks high, and you're going to have massive gains in like percent performance by overclocking the memory on this thing. Like probably a lot more, like if you increase the memory clock by like 2%, you'll probably have pretty close to 2% more performance, whereas on the other cards you might only get like 1.5 or 1.7%. Um, yeah. So, I think that's it. I think that's everything I wanted to say. So, uh, I don't really get why NVIDIA put so much work into increasing core counts and clock speeds and making new GPUs if they're just going to pair them with memory systems that are not able to feed them data fast enough. Um, so yeah, like we, we'll see how it really is once the cards come out, but this is what I see is going to be the thing with them. Um, and I think that really should be it. I don't want to make this any longer. So thank you all for watching. Um, maybe tell me in the comments what you think about this. And until next time, goodbye.